Hi, I'm Robert Jones, the owner and founder of E16 Winery, located in Fairplay of the Sierra Foothills. And next to me is my neighbor, Frank Medikin of Creekside Cork and Brew. Welcome, folks. Hope you're having a great day. Uh, we can't wait to see you and we're excited to be here and uh, we're gonna do some amazing stuff today. So we hope to see you. We're open for business. We would love to, for you to come on and join us. Today, what we're doing is I'm presenting the E16 2018 Baby Rattlesnake Vineyard Barbera. And Frank is going to be presenting and showing the recipe of... Uh, we're gonna be making a short rib ragu parpadelli which I think is gonna really complement this awesome wine. Um, once we uh, settle down, we'll get started and then hope you enjoy. Let's get rolling. All right, folks, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make some fresh pasta. Um, I worked in a lot of different areas of the uh, restaurant industry. Um, one of the most simple recipes that I learned is when I worked in Scarpetta in Beverly Hills. Um, that was one of the, the most awesome experience I've ever had. Um, in my cooking career. And I've been doing this for 25 years. Um, the one of the most important things you wanna do about pasta is keep it simple um, and make sure that it has enough time to rest. And you always, always wanna make sure it doesn't stick to any surfaces that you're gonna cut. Um, I already have our dough ready to go. Um, I'm just gonna show you quick tips of how to roll and then because this is a parpadelli, it's gonna be a thicker noodle. So instead of switching to a cutting uh, uh, machine, we're just gonna cut it by hand. Very simple. So first of all, you always wanna make sure that um, you flour your dough, that way it doesn't stick to any surfaces. And if you have one of these KitchenAid uh, rolling uh, attachments, you also wanna uh, flour the attachment itself. Um, for parpadelli, you don't want to go too thick because the problem would happen is when you try to cook it, you won't it won't cook through as fast as it should. So what I do is I start on position number one and I go all the way to position five. So every time you pass it once, just switch your le uh, lever to the next level. And then once you get to five, we'll show you I'll show you how the way I cut. You can cut it any way you like. Um, with this recipe that we're gonna make today, the other thing you can do is, it's very versatile. So you can make raviolis, um, you can make a thinner pasta if you want, um, but just for today's recipe, we're just gonna make carpadelli. So once we get to position five, we will turn off our attachment and then we'll cut. And then make sure you always have your surface uh, flour, that way it doesn't stick. So there's your sheet of pasta. I just fold it twice over, grab your knife, and then you cut about half inch segments. And then if you want to use it right away, totally fine. It should look like this. Um, if you want to hold them for future, all you got to do is exactly the same process. Roll them up in a little uh, nest, if you want to call it, and then just throw it in your freezer and ready to use. Simple as that. But for today, all we're going to do is we're going to stretch it out. And then we're going to give it a quick cut. And there is your parpadelli pasta. All right, now we're gonna take the short ribs out of the oven. Um, they should be fall off the bone bomb. Um, so let's see, we'll open it up and we'll take a look at them. Oh yeah, baby. That's a short rib. Let's see how tender they are. Fall off the bone, baby. All right, now we'll get ready to make the dish. Enjoy. All right, folks. So our short ribs out, super tender. Um, now we're gonna put it together. Our ingredients, we have our, our fresh pasta right here. Um, just to add a little more richness to the actual dish, we have uh, unsalted butter, garnish, we have parsley, and my favorite cheese to use is Parmesan cheese. It just gives it that really uh, cheesy, nutty flavor. 
Um, and then we also have our braising liquid. So let's move over to the stove and we'll get started. All right, folks, here we are. Last step, last moment. Um, quick tips, just so you guys know. You always, always, always want to salt your water. You don't want to have bland pasta. Um, the way I do it and the way I've always learned is just about sea water. If you don't want that much salt, tone it down a little bit. If you like it that way, just imagine that you swallow water in the ocean. Simple as that. Um, so we'll start off. And then the other thing too to remember is that when we're cooking fresh pasta, it's gonna take a lot less time than if you're cooking uh, dry pasta. So with this part of daily, I'm thinking we're gonna go maybe four minutes at most. Um, if you like a little more al dente, then we can go three. If you like a little more overcooked, you can go a little bit longer. It just depends on you. But for us here at the restaurant, we just do four minutes for fresh pasta. Um, depending on if you want to use dry, then I would just recommend you read the box. Um, from what I've learned, maybe eight minutes at the most for super al dente pasta. All right, let's get started. Really? So first of all, we're going to add our fat. Just a, a tablespoon of butter. And all you want to do is like get it warm enough. And then at the same time, you're going to add your braising liquid. Here at the restaurant, we like our, our pasta saucy. So we use about four ounces of, uh, of sauce, and then we just let it mellow, and then it will come to a simmer. And then once that comes around, you drop your pasta. And the other thing too is remember, you always wanna move it around so it doesn't get stuck to each other. And then you wanna let it go. A few moments later. All right, folks, here we are. Pasta's almost done. It's been boiling for about four minutes. We'll take it out, let it strain for a little bit. Um, if your pasta, if your dish seems a little bit dry, all you gotta do is dip your uh, uh, basket in the water and then just drip a little water. Pasta water is always your best sauce. So we'll strain a little bit. We'll add the parpadelli to the sauce. Then we'll toss in our red braised meat. And then we'll toss it in. Turn off your fire. Grab your Parmesan cheese. Um, you, can, you can use grated if you want. I like fresh Parmesan cheese because it melts a lot better. Um, and then again, it all depends on what you love. If you love a lot of cheese, Add some cheese. Um, I do about two tablespoons. We'll toss it a little bit, make it look creamy. The more you toss it, the more those fats get in, infused in the sauce. And you want all those noodles to have all that juice in it. All right, now we'll move over to the plate and we'll plate. Here we go, folks. So the last step you guys wanna do Give a little bit of garnish. Move it around. And if you guys are ha just eating at home by yourself, feel free to plate it. But if you're having a fancy dinner, I have a perfect trick for you. And I learned this after four years of doing it the wrong way, if I wanted a pretty one. Grab a ladle. And then you grab your noodles. You put them in the ladle and you twist it and it's your it's your like your third hand and then you will have that perfect presentation right in the middle of the plate it's gonna take a little time because you have to use that wrist but after that anything that's left over it's fair game You finish it off on top. Make sure you get all that meat in there. Grab your last piece of cheese. And voila, ladies and gentlemen, there's your short rib ragu parpadette.
Enjoy. Okay, this is the moment that we've been waiting for. Okay, so let's go ahead and taste this E16 Baby Rattlesnake Vineyard Barbera. Okay, so let's go ahead and taste this, and then we're going to go ahead and pair it with this beautiful short rib ragu pappardelle that Chef Frank has made. Let's get into the Barbera first. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Okay. Boy, it's got this enticing blackberry nose on it. It's got a little hint of vanilla to it. Very enticing to the tongue. Yeah, you're right. Very smooth. Boy. So I, can, got, so I can taste that blackberry that you're talking about. The blackberry, the dark plums to it. So it hits the tongue just beautifully. It's got this, and then it broadens out on the palate with these fresh herbs. Mm -hmm. And again, that vanilla yeah. uh, flavor, a little hint of vanilla. And it's got these soft, soft tannins to it, but it's got a lively, bright, brightness, the acidity to it, that is a very characteristic of, of Barbera. And you, you, you taste this, and this is Barbera. It's, it's an elegant, sophisticated Barbera. Mm -hmm. And I think you're right. I think the acidity, because we use this wine in the bracing method that we use today, um, it really brings out and it matches the savoriness of the short rib that we created. And then with the fresh pasta, and the braising liquid, oh my God, it's so good. I know, it makes me want to just dive into it right let's now. Let's do it. Okay. Let's do it, sir, this is for you. Okay, let's dive into this. My mouth is just watering. Oh yeah. My goodness. The fresh pasta mm. with that savory, and then and then you take up another sip of this. I'm oh. oh boy, the richness of the ragu. Oh, it's so good. It, it screams for the Barbera. They actually, yeah, they complement very well each other because without the Barbera, it would just be oh. too savory. But with that, it just cuts it perfect. It just, dude, this has beautiful. So <laughs> come, come visit us. We are open. Visit us at E16. Come to the wine cave, sit next to the creek. Come over to Creekside, enjoy this amazing dish, an amazing wine. And we are a destination. So come join, come join us. And so, chin chin. Chin mancha. chin, mancha.